Now this technique or method can work on any skill, but today let's focus on the press handstand as an example. So I'm gonna take you through how to break down the movement and teach it or learn it no matter what your skill level. So let's put that in as number one as our goal. So press handstand, and then this is the line of progression to that skill. So what we need to do next is break it down or reverse engineer it all the way back to the initial level or to your level that you are current. But if you're a coach, you need to take it all the way back to any person that comes to see you. So let's do that today. So press handstand can be broken down into lots of chunks, but let's just do the main ones first. So if we put a marker here and say eccentric press. So an eccentric press is just doing the press handstand, but backwards. So I'm gonna start in a handstand position. So here, whoops, start in that handstand, and then I'm gonna come down slowly through the eccentric movement all the way down to land where my takeoff starts. Now, if I can do that with control all the way down, that's a good way towards the press hands. That was freestanding. So I could put freestanding, eccentric, press handstand. So an easier version of the freestanding eccentric is all eccentric press. So that would be a regression further down that line of the movement. And the eccentric against the wall is the same idea. So I start in the handstand, but now I go to the wall and then I come down with control, mind the wall on the other side until my tippy toes touch the floor. So there. Now to be able to do that, I need to be able to kick up to the wall, but I also need to be able to take my shoulders to the wall in this shoulder lean position and have the control to do that. So I can then drop back even further and go wall lean. But remember I had to kick up to the wall to do that. So I need to have a wall kick up, which could be one of the very early exercises. So you can see already we're starting to populate this. Now the eccentric is a great fundamental or a great stepping stone towards the press handstand, but the downside of the eccentric is it's only the down phase and we need something for the up phase. So a really good exercise is the partial range press to handstand. So with the partial range press handstand, I put my feet up onto an elevated surface and I press up to my handstand. So a great exercise and it's really cool because I can change the height depending on my level and my ability with the movement. So that's cool. It's a freestanding movement. So it needs to be in here. Maybe let's do that here. So freestanding partial range press handstand. Now an easier version of that is the same thing, but closer to the wall and I can go up there, push back off at the top. So that needs to go here wall, partial range, press, handstand. Now another great exercise for the press handstand is the jump. So that's a concentric, but I'm using momentum to get through the movement. So I'll start in my start, my press position, I'll bend the knees to get the jump, jump to get the momentum to pass through the pathway, finish in the handstand, and then I can come back down the way I went up. So the freestanding jump would maybe be here. So freestanding jump. We've got the wall version as well. which is obviously much easier than the freestanding version. Now this is gonna be slightly different for everyone because certain people might find a partial range easier than an eccentric and other people might find an eccentric easier than a partial range. So there is gonna be some variability in terms of what's harder than the other, but in terms of progressions, there'll be some definite lines. Like you need to have a freestanding handstand somewhere. We need to have the mobility to do these movements somewhere. And that's where it can get very messy when you try and keep it on one line. So a really cool way to do it, if it's a complex movement like a press handstand, is to do another line here, and we could call this one mobility for press. We could have another one that is strength for press. And another one that's really important for all these handstand movements is to have a definite progression for your handstand balance. And you could include all of those on that same line, but it will get a lot more easier if you start to split it up and really understand all your progressions. So the handstand balance is a great example. So we could go chest to wall hold. So just getting your conditioning when you're learning your handstand, a beginner would start in this position, hold here for time, maybe 10, 20 seconds, come back down, have a rest, go again. The person who's more stronger in the position would go closer, hold there for time, up to 60, 90 seconds in that position. Then we have things like heel pulls, toe pulls for reps, for holds. So that's increasing our balance window. So I kick up this way, 
use my fingertips to pull off. So that's training my overbalance. And then I need to do the same, which is seen as a harder exercise, but working the underbalance, so the toe pull movement. So there, and then once we get some control, we've got free standing handstand. So having the ability to just hold a freestanding handstand in the middle of the room for time. Once we've got there, we wanna be starting to play with shapes, both tuck and straddle, to give us the ability to go through the progressions of the press handstand, but also to build that really important upper back, trap, shoulder strength, to be able to handle all the balance and the strength drills in those positions. So straddle handstand, tuck handstand. Now for the mobility, we need to have straddle, we need to have a forward fold position to get our hip crease on top of our hands. That gives us the flow or the position to be able to flow. And not only do we need that flexibility for that position, we need the strength. So the strength of the press really comes from protraction for the upper back. And the stronger you are in that position, the easier you can press using strength and not just flexibility. So improving both of these things at the same time is really important. So we have straddle, forward fold flexibility, so both of those things need to be improved. So you could put in specific exercises or ranges of motion that you're aiming for on that progression line. But basically with those two things, if they can get easier and easier, deeper and deeper, more flexible, your press is gonna be easier. If we can increase our planche strength, so planche. So if we go to a tuck planche, so having the ability to be able to hold this position for time comfortably, that type of movement is going to really open you up and give you a really good chance of succeeding in your press even if these aren't quite so strong but if you're working on these and these you're in the best possible position now you can delve deeper into each of these so not just increasing our tuck plant strength or our plant strength but also if we go into bent arm strength suddenly that gives us more options when it comes to press handstand because i can go into that start of the press if i can't lift off bend my arms now look i've lifted my feet up so I'm muscling the press handstand, but that is one option to slowly get towards the straight arm press handstand. Now the press handstand is one of the more complex movements because it requires all those things. But if you've just done this for handstand balance alone, your line's gonna be a lot more simplistic. Same as if you only went for a tuck planche, you could just focus on this line and not worry about all of this. But this sort of thing is really important if you're a coach and you're training other people to do these skills because you could have someone come along that fits here here or here, and knowing all the progressions and the regressions around that is really, really important. Now, if you're trying to learn a skill, the most important thing that you know is where you are on this progression line, and then what is the skill or the progression in front of you and behind. So if you wanna do more repetitions or if you're having a bad day, you need to be able to drop back to the easier exercises. If you're having a good day and you're making good progress, then you need to know what the next exercise is. So if you're working with a coach, they should be able to give you that information. What you don't want to feel is that you've got a massive gap. So say you're here, your next progression is here, and there's 10 increments in between, and you don't know what they are. They're the things you need to start to fill. Now my goal with this YouTube channel, my app, and my website for my online coaching is to give my clients the information and tools they need to go from wherever they are on these progression lines all the way to their goals and get them to the point where they can do that themselves. If you're after coaching, links are down in the description. If you have any questions, stick them down in the comments, and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, guys.